welcome to Living Life. Uh, why does God allow Christians to suffer? Right? This uh, problem of suffering and this question of suffering just comes to our minds like a lot of times in our lives. And even in the Bible, there's a lot of locations that, uh, that the writers are mentioning about suffering. and the re They're giving different reasons why uh, the Christians uh, go through suffering. And there are just a few examples, uh, like from Hebrews chapter 12, there's the, the, the suffering was given to discipline for personal sin. In James 1, to develop perse uh, perseverance, character, and maturity. And in Philippians 1, for the advance of the gospel. And in 1 Peter, uh, to follow Christ's example, uh, to show His glory to others. And in 1 Peter chapter 1 as well, to show genuine faith and glorify God. In today's passage in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, this uh, first part of that chapter 1, we're going to look at why God is allowing uh, Christians to suffer. And the mainly what uh, this passage is telling us is actually the, one of the purposes of suffering is actually when we go through suffering, that God is preparing us to comfort others through the suffering that we're going through. Let's look at the passage together. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all the saints throughout Achaia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces a new patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us. On Him we have set our hope that He will continue to deliver us, as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us, in answer to the prayers of many. Uh, back in first century, uh, during the ministry of Paul, when he was ministering in Asia Minor and like uh, Macedonia and all around the world, uh, he was uh, facing a lot of opponents. Actually, the main opponents of uh, the Paul was actually questioning about his apostolic calling. Uh, they were questioning about him uh, whether he is a real apostle, right? And because the reason behind that was because of all the suffering and the weakness that Paul was experiencing in his life. And the people around him, the opponents, uh, were, they were questioning whether Paul is the real apostle because of the suffering that he's going through. And the same question was among the churches, because a lot of churches in the first century, they were going through suffering. And they were persecuted and they were killed uh, for, the, uh, for Christ's name sake. And uh, they had the question, the Christians in, uh, in the first century, they had the question in their mind, why are we going through the suffering? And if God is real, and if God is there, and if He loves us, why are we going through suffering? So a lot of writers in the Bible actually uh, is trying to answer that question. And Paul is one of them. Actually, Paul has uh, more input uh, about this question of suffering than any other writers in the Bible. So uh, what uh, Paul is saying is that he's trying to defend right, his apostleship. And at the same time, he's giving the clear reason why uh, Christians are going through suffering. Verse 4, he's saying, uh, who comforts us in all our troubles? Of course, God, right? God who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. 
If we see from verse 4 of 2 Corinthians, he's saying that God is comforting us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those who in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. So it, according to this verse, is he's saying that he received suffering and upon that suffering, God poured out comfort and that uh, equals to the comfort for others. So through him going through suffering and through him experiencing the comfort from God, now he is able to comfort others. And he's applying the same thing to the church. Right? He's telling the church that you should, you should go through suffering and through the suffering that you're going through, that you will receive the comfort from God and that comfort you're receiving will be flowing from you to other people and you can be a comfort to others as well. It sounds very, uh, it can be very uh, just nonsense and it, it, you may think that, uh, think of that uh, the pleasure that was derived from another person's suffering. Uh, but is that true? Or it may sound like God is using the carrot and the uh, a stick method, right? God is uh, giving like food and making compliment, and at the same time he's going uh, giving suffering, and after suffering he's going just feeding us again and treating us nicely, and he's again persecuting us back and forth, and that can confuse a lot of Christians. Uh, but Paul is again very clarifying all this by saying in verse five, for just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ. Our comfort overflows. What it means is that Christ came not to just uh, to live a comfortable life. Christ actually came to suffer. Right? He's the first coming of Christ on earth. The main purpose and the main point of Him coming to earth was to go through suffering. And through, by us participating in the suffering of Christ, and just as the suffering of Christ flow over into our lives as we participate in suffering, that His comfort, the comfort that Christ is giving to us, will flow, uh, or just overflow from us as well. So as the church is going through the suffering, as church is going, participating in the suffering of Jesus Christ, actually we are participating in the comfort of Jesus Christ as well. And why is it so significant? Why Jesus can give the comfort to us? The true comfort is given only when we fully acknowledge the pain right, uh, of that person, right? we cannot give a person comfort without knowing the pain. And then like, we should understand that true comfort is given only by God because God is the only one who can understand and who actually went through the pain and the suffering that we went through. So uh, just without acknowledging the sovereignty of God, that God has the overall knowledge and understanding of the pain and the suffering, we cannot really embrace the true comfort. Right? So the true comfort that we are receiving from Jesus Christ is actually based on our faith, uh, on the sovereignty of God, who has control over our suffering and who has control over our comfort as well. So God is not a God who is waiting until everything is done and all the suffering is over and he will just come and clean the mess. But God is the one who actually participated beforehand, before us. Uh, he went through that suffering and now he is comforting us because he has the full understanding. There's no comfort in suffering without God in our lives because God is the ultimate, the sovereign Lord uh, who has control over the suffering. There are a lot of pains and uh, suffering that we go through. And there are some like death of our family members, divorce, depression, and the pain, and some illnesses that we go through in our lives that uh, just no one in, on earth can understand. Or no one in, on earth can uh, really comfort us. But uh, God can. Right? God is the one, only one who is able to comfort us because our God is only God uh, who has the sovereign, sovereign power over us. And he's not only taking care of uh, just us who could only created us, but he also uh, is uh, having control over all the suffering that we're going through. So I hope uh, as you're going through the suffering, 
that you have the hope that's in you、uh, toward God and faith on God who has the sovereignty, not only over your life, but only over uh, uh, also on the suffering that you are going through as well. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much、uh, for today's passage and、uh, for the word of encouragement that you are God who is sovereign. Your God, who has control over suffering as well, my Father, we thank you for、uh, the suffering that you went through before us, so that you may have the full understanding of the suffering that we're going through right now and the pain that we're going through right now, and、uh, just under the understanding that you have for us, that you're comforting us right now, and through your encouragement, through your comfort, or help us to stand again、uh, firm on your word and on your love. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. This program is a part of the Sojourn Hwan's program.